They even got the black cows locked up, man. Wish I could go over there and break them out. Man, even the blackbird did. Our Miss Malik just pulled up to the crib. We great to make this video. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell the people slime a lot. <laughs> Listen up, listen up. We wish 
What characteristics does he have that appeal? He did not give the order to kill my people like it's happening in all other cities. And it was a federal law for any boy, anyone that ride or, or loot. And he didn't give the order. You mean by not giving the order to shoot? That didn't make him that, he let, he, he let the people know that their life was worth more than property. All material things. And you think that this has been the big difference in New York? Yes. Well, he walks around, he shakes hands with people, he speaks to them, yet he doesn't have the money to do the things that he wants to do. So, don't the people feel let down because of that? No, he let the people know that he does not have the money and where the money must come from. That's the only thing he can do. So then, you have the feeling that he levels with people. I speak for the five cities he do. And so far, he has leveled with the other people. I know that too because I'm not the only one that loves him up here. We have Brother Minister Malika Law here, and we're honored by his presence today, and he's going to share with us 
some of the life-giving teachings of the Most Humble Elijah Muhammad. Brother Minister, today we would like to share with the people, what is the messenger's basic teachings on the black man being God? Yes, sir. As-salamu alaykum, as -salamu alaykum, peace, brothers and sisters. Well, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught for decades that the black man is the law, the black man is God, and besides the black man, there is no God. No, indeed. He teaches us in all of his books, the lessons, everything, that we are a law, you know, the God, and there is no God but us. Mm. If you study your lessons, you, the student enrollment rules of Islam, it teaches who's the original man. The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker of the owner cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. Then we go over to Lost Found Muslim lesson number two. Number one, who made the Holy Quran or Bible? How long ago will you tell us why does Islam renew our history every 25,000 years? Answer, the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is a law. True indeed. The original people who is the law. That includes the brothers and the sisters. He didn't just say the original man. Hmm. He said the original people. And yes, this question was asked to him by Masfar Muhammad. Masfar Muhammad did not interject hmm. or, or scold him or to, tell him that was wrong. Hmm. You know, we have a lot of a lot of uh, brothers and sisters in this day and time saying that, you know, the original woman is not a law. You know, she she's she's a goddess. And we are God, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was explaining to the brother, I seen a sister on the internet saying that she is God, you know, mm -hmm. she is a goddess. You have a feminine and you have a masculine principle in, um, in nature, right. but getting back to, you know, getting back to the original question, you know, we could go to our savior as a rob page 108, you know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that Allah is all of us. You know, and we got one that we could throw this name holy up upon. You know, he's wiser over us. He's supreme. You know, he's the one that know more than we all know. So, you know, we give him that title of supreme. You know, right. supreme meaning the most highest. But when you study the universe, you study the life forms of the universe, the uh, insect life, the animal life. Uh, you know, you can even go to the sun, moon, and stars, and when you when you study all that and compare it to the original man, you understand that we are supreme over everything in the universe. No There's doubt. nothing superior to the original man. All colors come from us. You know, everything, we could produce everything, but nothing can produce us. No so doubt. that makes us supreme over all life forms. Mm -hmm. So God is just a supreme being, meaning the most highest form of existence. And when you, the most highest form of existence is what we uh, call intelligence. Supreme intelligence, if you study any life form in the universe, supreme intelligence exists in the mind of man. So that makes uh, man the supreme being over all life forms. And if he's the supreme being over all life forms, that makes him what? God. True the messenger teaches us that we have two gods on the scene today. We have a righteous one and we have a wicked one. You know, we know the white man is the devil, but he is also a god as well. He's the god of evil. You know, we allowed him to do his thing for 6,000 years, and now his time is up. It's time for us to come into ourselves and take back that which we allow him to borrow for the last 6,000 years. Okay. Our brother Yaku produced him. We shut ourselves down. You know, we allow Yaqub to do his thing. If we, was, if we was still at our supreme state, you know, the white man couldn't do nothing with us, so we allow the devil to do his thing. You know, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we allow all of the colors to rule. You know, give them a chance to show forth their wisdom. You know, and now it's time for us to take back our place in the sun. You know, and of course, it's a, a whole bunch of opposition, you know, to us being who we are naturally, the rulers of the universe. Hmm. But we are slowly coming back into the knowledge of ourselves. You know, it's a, you know, uh, uh, a lot of distractions, a lot of detractions and, you know, things of that nature there. But nevertheless, the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like our brother Coin, is the only message that will guide us out of this age of mess. So we want to keep the teachers, the raw, direct teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
I like to call him Messenger Elijah Muhammad because a lot of people get it mixed up that, you know, you know, they take the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and try to take the title of messenger away from him. Mm. You know, they say that he is not the messenger of Allah. You know, they try to take us back to, you know, Prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago when the Holy Quran clearly teaches us that every nation has or gets a messenger. Okay. So if the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is not our messenger, then who is? Hmm, you know, give me, give me, give me something. <laughs> give me somebody. <laughs> give me a name. Yeah. You know, we we done had all kinds of people come, you know, before and after the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Where the works. And I'm not throwing no stones at nobody. I, you know, the, the truth just speaks for itself. You know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches has been used and is being used by everybody. Well you know, that, that has, you know, any type of substance to what they teach. Dr. Sabi, all of the brothers. You know, not taking that. He admitted that himself, so I'm not throwing those stones at nobody. You know, you got brothers that said, you know, nobody came and taught our people how to eat properly besides the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. You see, everybody start with the smoothies. Jenny Craig with a, a, a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and a sensible dinner. That's mm -hmm. Eat one meal a day. Yes, sir. You know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad <laughs> been teaching this for decades. You know, but everybody's making money off of it and using it besides us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that said and concluded, you know, the black man is God. Ain't no God in us. Mm -hmm. Ain't no God coming uh, uh, after us. We <laughs> are the God, the only God. Yes, sir. You know, if you don't look in the mirror and see God, you know, that's your problem. Yes, you know, sir. we we've been teaching that, we've been showing and proving that, and if you can prove to me that there's any other God besides the black man, I take my crown and cast it at your feet. Yes, sir. And I know you can't do that. Yes, sir. Salam Allah. Allah Salam. Thank you, Blah. Brother Minister Ali, can you explain to me where you feel? the current state of the nation of Islam is at this moment and good or bad, how do you see us taking ourselves to the next level? That's an excellent question. One, the message teach us in our lesson 17 ways to play Islamic culture, do not look on the bad side of things that may appear bad to us. There's always a good side. It's better to take that side. So I always try to be an optimist instead of a pessimist. I mean, the glass is half full, it's not half empty. So the good, the good thing is the nation of Islam is here, it's alive, it's vibrant, it's relevant. Um, I agree with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's analysis on the future of the nation of Islam, that the nation of Islam would rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and never fall again. So we've seen in the 1930s, the nation of Islam rules with the teachings of Masfar Muhammad, specifically in Detroit, Chicago. But then when Masfar Muhammad left, the nation fell. The message said you could put the whole nation of Islam in a taxi cab. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the nation fell in the 1930s. You know what I mean? Then in 1975, when it was announced that the Ambalaj Muhammad physically died, his son, Iman Warfdi Muhammad, came in and he told uh, the believers basically that he had a better scheme. He had a better theology. He had a more pure form of Islam. So the nation of Islam became known as the world community of Islam and Bilalians, and there was no more FYIs and MGTs. And they uh, rejected Master Far Muhammad as the supreme law God in person, and they rejected his father, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as the last messenger of Allah. And they became basically orthodox Muslims. So the nation of Islam fell again in 1975. Then around August of 1978, our beloved brother, Minister Salas Muhammad, stood back up and began teaching the original direct teachings of Al Balaj Muhammad. In the following month, in September of 1978, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan began teaching that same original divine direct teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. So the nation of Islam was resurrected in 1978. And, you know, the Bible teaches us um, symbolically or theologically that, you know, after the death of Jesus, 
you know, the two disciples ran to the sepulcher or to the grave site of Jesus. John, the one that Jesus loved, he got there first. And the scriptures teaches us that that disciple, he looked in to the grave of Jesus. And when he looked in, he saw that he had the death mask on it. Back then they wore, they would put a napkin or a handkerchief over the dead person's face. You know what I mean? As a Jewish custom or a Muslim custom, they cover the face of the deceased out of respect. You know what I mean? Known as the death mask. But the scriptures teaches us that that disciple that got there first and looked in on it first, he personally didn't go in there. So the scripture says that the other disciple, Peter, he came running up and went past the first disciple and did the exact same thing. But the difference was the Bible says Peter went into the actual grave or the actual death situation of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. And the scripture says that Peter was the one that took the napkin off of the face of Jesus. That's in our Bible. What does it mean? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the napkin represents falsehood. You know what I mean? The slander, the character, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, even though I love and respect the Honorable Salas Muhammad for being the first to stand up and go forward to go into the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and to mentally resurrect those teachings from the grave of ignorance and to get us back on the path of peace, truth, freedom, justice, and equality. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he just had the charisma. He had the character, the nature, the eloquence. He had the whole package, if you will, that naturally allow the 85% to gravitate towards his teachings in the masses. So Minister Farrakhan, he went in. I mean, he went into the teachings of Ambul Elijah Muhammad. Um, you know, I'm not getting into the different branches. Some people believe that Ambul Elijah Muhammad is physically dead. Some believe that he's physically alive. I personally believe that he's physically dead, but I love and respect those that believe he's physically alive. I understand their theology on that. They're not saying that he physically died and came back. They're saying it was a death plot that he never died. Oh, you know what I mean? So out of respect, that's a whole different subject. You know what I mean? But um, it's interesting that the messenger teaches us that the 24 scientists write history in advance. And we see in prophecy that two of the ministers of Jesus is investigating his teachings after his demise, after his departure, and one is going to get there before the other. And then in real life, in real time, right here in the United States of America, we see a man known as the Honorable Salas Muhammad stand up for the life-giving teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad again. And we see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan came and taught those same teachings, but he put out the final call. He raised more of the people. He took it international. So he, you know, he, he um, you know, did exactly what's written there inside those prophecies or inside those scriptures. You know what I mean? So I see the nation of Islam in the light of prophecy. You know what I mean? I believe that the Supreme Allah God came in the person of Masfar Muhammad to all praises to do forever. I do not believe that Masfar Muhammad is going to physically come back and do anything. I believe 100% in our mother plane, but I also believe in the other plan. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in 1972 in the Theology of Time, he told us that the um, he asked the Savior about the mother plane and the destruction. He said the Savior explained to him that the angel said America is not worth one of those bombs. And I mean, that the angel of a law position was like, you know, Master Muhammad is such a powerful guy. He said he could take America without even striking a match. Now, I mean, so in theology, you know, again, when you look at the prophecies, we see that you can't burn a blemish animal on the altar of God. Now, I mean, you know, so it's like the messenger teaches us that America is the place where the new world will be built. He told us in 1974 in his last tome or his last book, 
Al says arrived, he explained to us that after the 390 years of burning and 610 years of cooling off, the FY and MGTs would have migrated to the islands of the far Pacific and over to the double big islands of New Zealand. And after a thousand years, they would come back and the same place that was hell will be the hereafter. He explained that after that type of burning, the, the fruit and the vegetables, there'd be no need for medicine in the hereafter. I mean, it'd be a whole new world. But he said that Allah doesn't make anything new. He, Allah, makes all things new. So it's not that he's going to create some new atoms. He's going to make the law of vibration vibrate on such a high plate, plate and vibration that it's going to seem like the old is transformed into something totally new. Now, I mean, so uh, the hereafter is after this wicked world of sin, after the 6,000 year rule of Dr. Yaku Malik Shabazz's children is done with. And we're in that era now. Now, I mean, actually, the devil's time was up in 1985, according to the Ambalaj Muhammad's Asiatic calendar calculations. But he explained to us in 1965 in Message to the Black Man on page number nine that as long as we remain asleep, to the knowledge of God, the devil could rule for the next million years. <laughs> so even though they was given 6,000 years, mm -hmm. we, we can change prophecy. Now, I mean, you know, like the message said in his first book, now I mean, his first time in um, the Supreme Wisdom, volumes one and two, 1957, that, you know, um, he wants us to make the truth so plain that a baby can understand it so that we could break the old prophet's prediction about the 144,000. They're going to just be the first fruits. You know what I mean? So, you know, the scientist thing was, you know, we made the devil to rule for 6,000 years, but things happen. I mean, the black man is God, period. So we see, you know, the king, you know, they rounded the devils up. And instead of letting them rule for 6,000, they marched them across the Raven Desert 2,200 miles and put them in a cage for 2,000 years, okay? Now, I mean, the message is we raised Prophet Musa, half-original man, to go civilize the uncivilized, but Nimrod broke his, <laughs> his cipher, I mean, by 300 years, and, and he raised up these, you know, other devils. So now we got these devils that's like, barbarians and pirates and vikings and gladiators and colonizers now i mean they like we don't supposed to be nice eating kosher food fish on friday like abraham jews and all nah <laughs> that thing we we come to plunder rape rob and murder so you have the real devils that's doing that devilishment and it's the same thing with the black man the message said the black man in the wilderness of North America is not an example of the original man because we've been under the devil for the past 6,000 years. So we're, the challenge for us in this day and time is to get out of organized religion. I believe that there are different dimensions to the nation of Islam. There are those that are basically practicing and believing in the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but from a Sunni or Orthodox Muslim base, where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad position was, it's going to be a new Islam, totally different from the Orthodox Islam. The principle is going to remain the same, mm -hmm. but we're not talking about a loss of Pan White to Islas in us, um, outside of us, um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a thoughts of peace be upon him, is the same one that we mean when we talk about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We're saying that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the Rasul or the messenger of Allah. He's the Rasul Allah. I mean, he's the messenger of God. I mean, and Prophet Muhammad is the Katim Nabi or the seal of the prophets. So the messenger taught us in supreme wisdom and in um, message to the black man, Prophet Muhammad, he is the last of the prophets. That's not that's not the type, that's not how we use the word prophet in the nation of Islam. In the 1930s, we just was looking at some old literature from the 30s. We see the messenger used to call himself Prophet Elijah Muhammad. He wasn't saying prophet like Prophet Muhammad. In the 1930s, everybody was a prophet. <laughs> a prophet meant a righteous minister in modern day and time. I mean, you had prophet Noble Drew Ali, Prophet Jones. Yeah, you had all kinds of prophets that was teaching black people knowledge of self before Master Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad. There's a whole bunch of prophets 
um, all over the United States of America, female prophecies. And I mean, so prophets was the was a biblical terminology. Where in this day and time, people when they hear the word prophet, they're not looking at it in the context of it's the 1930s. They're looking at it like we mean that Master Muhammad is a prophet, like Prophet Muhammad, like he's the prophet of the Quran. When, when, when he say prophet, prophet basically meant the, the spiritual guide, the leader, the teacher, um, God's point person, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it, so it was an organic terminology, and we can't look at it in a spooky sense. I mean, that's my point with that. So in the nation of Islam, in this day and time, you know, um, I'm one that believes that the believer should believe as the messenger originally believed. We have to be careful about sex and sex. And the nature of Islam is not a clique. You know what I mean? The messenger, he, he, he teaches it best. He explained that the trunk of the tree is stronger than any of its branches, meaning that the foundation, the teachings of Masfar Muhammad and al Muhammad, the lessons, the books, the direct words of the al Muhammad is stronger than Imam Wafti Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, Salas, Father of Law, what have you. We got like 16 different branches of the nation of Islam. Now, I mean, we had 13 tribes of Shabazz. Now, I mean, and the message teaches us six, six trillion years ago, we lost one at the deportation of our moon. And he said in supreme wisdom that we had 13 tribes, but now we only got 12. You know what I mean? And these 12 tribes of Shabbat shows that before the devil, we had these divisions. You know what I mean? So I'm not surprised that we have divisions. You know, that's one thing about the universe. Diversity is what makes things go into perfection. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at the nature of Islam that is not going to fall again. That doesn't mean that individuals in the nation of Islam won't fall. We see them falling every single day. I mean, we see FYs and MVTs that's now Christians, um, alcoholics, drug addicts. They committed suicide. They Sunnis. You know what I mean, they, 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 whatever. You know what I mean, you know, so individuals in a nation has and are falling. But we see new people coming into the nation of Islam. We see new believers. We see... Um, old believers maturing in the teachings of Ambalaja Muhammad. Now, I mean, you know, so I don't see the nation of Islam as falling, but I, I think that ultimately the younger FYs and MGTs are going to get more conscious in a collective sense, globally, politically, economically, socially, um, because they're, they're in a world that is rapidly shrinking. You know what I mean? And, you know, the dollar is all but dead. So we're talking the next generation. I doubt if the next generation be using physical money. I, that, that stuff is not going to be around like it is in this day and time. Mm -hmm. In our lifetime, we see that we're now like Bitcoins, credit cards, <laughs> cash apps. It's, it's, it's real rare to use cash in this day because the dollar is not backed by anything. It's not backed by salt pork chops, bean pies, gold, silver. It has nothing back in it. So the dollar was worth like 31 cents and it's dying. So so you're going to see not a decline of the dollar, but the actual death of that dollar. And what's going to happen is this new fiat money is going to be strictly digital. You know what I mean? So they could literally give you, what you want, a billion? They could push a button. You're a billionaire. And they could push a button. No, you're not. <laughs> I mean, so 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 that type of world is going to have its own problems. The nation has to realize we supposed to build a divine government, a world where we're not trying to put Masfar Muhammad picture on a new thousand dollar bill. We don't want gold coins with Ambalaj Muhammad and Sister Tanana Muhammad. We want a system where we don't use money. Civilized people don't use money. Original people didn't have money. I mean, we don't we don't need to barter. I mean, you know, if, if I got a bowl of soup, my brother got half that bowl because he's not going to misuse that. 
Now, I mean, he's not going to be too lazy to get in the field with me and turn the soil and help plant some be navy beans. Now, I mean, the sisters ain't going to be late. The, everybody's going to do that part. Now, I mean, now you're going to naturally have some people that have disabilities. Somebody might get injured. Somebody might be hurt. Someone may be infirm, too old. Now, I mean, and we look out for them. Now, I mean, but, but once we set up a system based on peace, truth, freedom, justice, and equality, we got to look at how will the nation of Islam look then? It'll look more like um, nation states, if you will. Like, like in this day and time, you see for over 500 years, you had the Brutal Hoss, the Quakers, the, the um, Lutherans, the Amish. They, they came here and their thing was they bought land. They grow what they eat. They build where they dwell. They sow what they wear. They healed themselves with herbs. They had they they doing for stuff. They have a nation and a nation, not as an idea. They be like, oh, the church is on our own property. We didn't buy our old building and fix it up and open it up as a church or a mosque or a mat. We built from the ground up our own schools, our own hospital, our own factories, our own farms. We we make our own carriages. <laughs> I mean, so they show that people operating in operational unity can nation build in maybe one or two weeks. That's what type of time frame. Black people already have the money. Financially, black people in America make over a trillion dollars. We're, we're richer than many nations all over. We're richer than Cuba, <laughs> I mean, countries in Africa. So we have the money. That's not the problem. The problem is we think that fiat money is real money. We don't have knowledge of self. We don't have the love of the law in our hearts in the sense of coming together to carve out a new world, a black new world order. You know what I mean? And this is where, this is me as a humble student following Abu Elijah Muhammad's teachings, when he explained to us that we supposed to be gods over our own homes, that's doing for self. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, okay, I'm not rich, but we got some land. I'm in my own home. You know what I mean? We in my own studio. You know what I mean? So we don't, so, so our thing is, we don't have to go to the temple. We are the temple. We don't have to go to the mosque, the church. We are the mosque. We are the church. We are the school. We are the university. You know what I mean? We, we're, we're, we're answering our own prayers when you apply the life-giving teachings of Abu Elijah Muhammad. When you put the messenger's teachings into practice, when you use applied mathematics, you know what I mean? It makes your Islam real. See what I'm saying? It, it puts you in a position of doing for self, defending what you have. You see what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and I think that as that collective consciousness expands and that dominant thought starts spreading and attracting others, you know what I mean? You know, it's like air likes, you know what I mean? Starlight links up with starlights till you just see light, you know what I mean? So it all comes from the messenger of Allah's teachings. And this is why I always say, only the messenger's message can guide us through this age of mess. Peace, family. Peace. We have Brother Minister Malik Law here, and we're honored by his presence today. And he's going to share with us some of the life-giving teachings of the Most Humble Lodge Muhammad. Brother Minister, today we would like to share with the people what is the messenger's basic teachings on the black man being God? Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, peace, brothers and sisters. Well, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught for decades that the black man is a law, the black man is God, and besides the black man, there is no God. So indeed. He teaches us in all of his books, the lessons, everything, that we are a law, you know, the God, and there's no God but us. Mm -hmm. If you study your lessons, you, the student enrollment rules of Islam, it teaches who's the original man. The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. Then we go over to Lost Found Muslim lesson number two, number one. 
who made the Holy Quran or Bible, how long ago will you tell us why does Islam renew our history every 25,000 years? Answer, the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is a law. True indeed. The original people who is a law. That includes the brothers and the sisters. He didn't just say the original man. He hmm. said the original people. And yes, this question was asked to him by Masfar Muhammad. Masfar Muhammad did not interject hmm. or, or scold him or to, tell him that was wrong. Hmm. You know, we have a lot of a lot of uh, brothers and sisters in this day and time saying that you know the original woman is not a law. You know, she she she's a goddess, and we are a god. You know, hmm. I I was explaining to the brother. I seen a sister on the internet saying that she is God. You know, mm -hmm. she is a goddess. You have a feminine and you have a masculine principle in um, in nature. Right. But getting back to, you know, getting back to the original question, you know, we could go to Our Savior as a Rob, page 108. You know, the Most Honorable Muhammad teaches us that Allah is all of us. You mm -hmm. know, and we got one that we could throw this name holy up upon. You know, he's wiser over us. He's supreme. You know, he's the one that know more than we all know. So, you know, we give him that title of supreme. You know, mm -hmm. supreme meaning the most highest. But when you study the universe, you study the life forms of the universe, the uh, insect life, the animal life. Uh, you know, you can even go to the sun, moon, and stars. And when you, when you study all that and compare it to the original man, you understand that we are supreme over everything in the universe. No There's nothing superior to the original man. All colors come from us. You know, everything, we could produce everything, but nothing can produce us. No so doubt. that makes us supreme over all life forms. Mm -hmm. So God is just a supreme being, meaning the most highest form of existence. And when you, the most highest form of existence is what we uh, call intelligence. Supreme intelligence, if you study any life form in the universe, supreme intelligence exists in the mind of man. So that makes uh, man the supreme being over all life forms. And if he's the supreme being over all life forms, that makes him what? God. True the messenger indeed. teaches us that we have two gods on the scene today. We have a righteous one and we have a wicked one. You know, we know the white man is the devil, but he is also a god as well. He's the god of evil. You know, we allowed him to do his thing for 6,000 years, and now his time is up. It's time for us to come into ourselves and take back that which we allow him to borrow for the last 6,000 years. Okay. Our brother Yaakov produced him. We shut ourselves down. You know, we allow Yaakov to do his thing. If we, is, if we were still at our supreme state, you know, the white man couldn't do nothing with us, so we allow the devil to do his thing. You know, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we allow all of the colors to rule. You know, give them a chance to show forth their wisdom. You know, and now it's time for us to take back our place in the sun. You know, and of course, it's a, a whole bunch of opposition, you know, to us being who we are naturally, the rulers of the universe. Hmm. But we are slowly coming back into the knowledge of ourselves. You know, it's a, you know uh, uh, a lot of distractions, a lot of detractions, and, you know, things of that nature there. But nevertheless, the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like our brother Coin, is the only message that will guide us out of this age of mess. So we want to keep the teachers, the raw, direct teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I like to call them Messenger Elijah Muhammad because a lot of people get it mixed up that, you know, you know, they take the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and try to take the title of messenger away from him. Mm. You know, they say that he is not the messenger of Allah. You know, they try to take us back to, you know, Prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago when the Holy Quran clearly teaches us that every nation has or gets a messenger. Okay. So if the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is not our messenger, then who is? Hmm, you know, question. give me, give me, give me something. <laughs> give me somebody. Give me a name. Yeah. You know, we we done had all kinds of people come, you know, before and after the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Where are the works? And I'm not throwing no stones at nobody. I, you know, the, the truth just speaks for itself. You know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teachings has been used and is being used by everybody. Well you know, that that has, you know, any type of substance to what they teach. Dr. Sabi, all of the brothers. 
You know, not taking it. He admitted that himself. So I'm not throwing those stones at nobody. You know, you got brothers that said, you know, nobody came and taught our people how to eat properly besides the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. You see, everybody start with the smoothies. Jenny Craig with a, a, a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and a sensible dinner. That's mm -hmm. Eat one meal a day. Yes, sir. You know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad <laughs> been teaching this for decades. <laughs> you know, but everybody's making money off of it and using it besides us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that said and concluded, you know, the black man is God. Ain't no God in us. Mm -hmm. Ain't no God coming uh, uh, after us. We <laughs> are the God, the only God. Yes, sir. You know, if you don't look in the mirror and see God, you know, that's your problem. Yes, you know, sir. we we've been teaching that, we've been showing and proving that, and if you can prove to me that there's any other God besides the black man, I take my crown and cast it at your feet. Yes, sir. And I know you can't do that. Yes, sir. Salam law. Allah salam. Thank you, Bala. Muhammad Ali attends Savior's death. of America have been destructive to life for us. Elijah Muhammad teaches us in Holly to live. Our bones are stone. Our flesh is vegetation. Our blood is water. We come out of the atoms of life. We go right back into the atoms of life. We transform. So we want to be mindful of these things. The messenger said, if you must eat rice, I want to say that again. If you must eat rice, please brown it thoroughly in your oven or on top of your stove with a little butter or oil to keep it from sticking. Keep stirring it vigorously. Remember, eat only one meal once every 24 hours. What is the best time for us to eat? The best time for us to eat, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is between... 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. 4 and 6. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, and I like to quote him, so pardon me when I be turning so much, because I like to give you the direct, original, raw teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He says in How to Live, book number two, in the chapter titled Cook Food is Better, he says, if we eat one meal once every day at four o'clock or six o'clock, 
whatever's the best hour for your meal, then wait until that hour comes again before eating again. Now, you're about to eat your one meal. You don't want to eat your one meal at 11 o'clock. God, stop. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. Look at this slip game. Poetry and ballet. God stop. That man is the master, the Mahdi, the Messiah, the Supreme Allah. That's the one that blessed us with the knowledge of self. All praise is due to Allah who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. Two more praises are due forever. Say peace to the family. Peace, peace. peace. Family. peace. Do for self, peace. peace. A mind, contentment, money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. My husband, the Honorable Silas Muhammad. Lord, white father. Let me present this to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's Beautiful. Thank you, husband. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Happy Savior's Day. Happy Savior's Day. I am Silas Muhammad. I will definitely be teaching from a letter written by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to his blood son, Wallace Muhammad. His letter to his blood son, Wallace, may not have hit the press while he was yet with us. It is public information today. Here are certain facts about it. This is a call to all contemporary black Muslims and plantation slave descendants, which includes the Caribbean, Central, South, and North America, to resurrect and return to the world stage.
see and become acquainted with understanding the last messenger's point to you. The last messenger in the letter to his blood son, Wallace, mentions the beyond. When you have gotten over or outlived the sting of slavery, your mind is into the beyond. You will have gotten over slavery, or the sting of slavery, in one of two ways. By complete ethnocide or forced assimilation, which wipes your identity out as those of you who once were resurrected and witnessed or by self-identity, self-determination, which is the complete self-governing or self-government of your basic needs. Someone has come to resurrect and restore and wake you up again. Prior to July 4th, 1930, you were a lost and conquered people. Then appeared Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all praises are forever due. His knowledge of the universe and man's history on earth opened your eyes and resurrected you from mental slavery. Now, some of you have started thinking of building a nation you can call your own. Self-determination takes place when you identify with some, if not all, of the relics of what you were originally before you were made a slave. Schooled, including religion, in the ways of the white devil-natured society. You are the primeval mother, the earliest ever known people in the history of the world. And now, today, you are members of plantation slave descendants. You know what that feels like. Are we not the descendants of plantation or abused plantation slave masters? Spiritually, mentally, Physically, we were 400 years ago flashed, we flashed onto the world stage from slavery as a world recognized lost found nation of Islam. That is a fact. Is it time to lift off? Once more, again, like magic, it will appear the clear evidence 
mentioned in the Holy Quran is here to prove that the world has witnessed a man, Master Farad Muhammad, and his last and greatest messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. What will you do with these teachings? The Bible is not a right book for the new world. These things. The messenger said, if you must eat rice, I want to say that again. If you must eat rice, please brown it thoroughly in your oven or on top of your stove with a little butter or oil to keep it from sticking. Keep stirring it vigorously. Remember, eat only one meal once every 24 hours. What is the best time for us to eat? The best time for us to eat, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. 4 and 6. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, and I like to quote him, so pardon me when I be turning so much, because I like to give you the direct, original, raw teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He says in Hadith to Live, book number two, in the chapter titled Cooked Food is Better, he says, if we eat one meal once every day at four o'clock or six o'clock, whatever is the best hour for your meal, then wait until that hour comes again before eating again. Now, you're about to eat your one meal. You don't want to eat your one meal at 11 o'clock in the morning. You don't want to eat your one meal a day at 11 o'clock at night before you go to bed. You want to understand that you live on a planet that weighs six sextillion tons. You live on a planet that has 57,255,000 square miles of land, 139,685,000 square miles of water, which covers 196,940,000 square miles. You live on a planet that is revolving or rotating on her axis at the rate of 1,037 and one-third miles per hour. And the circumference or the circle of our planet, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is that of 24,896 miles. He teaches us that our planet has exactly 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds in a solar day. We don't use the moon. We use the moon for Ramadan, because when you first see that thin sliver of the moon on the right, that new moon, you know that's the first day of the month. You can look at the moon. When you see a half moon, you know it's like either the 14th, 15th, or 16th day of the month. When you see that full moon, you know it's either 28 or 31 days of the month. You can look at the moon and tell what day it is. We've been doing that for 66 trillion years. There are signs in the heavens over our head if we read them properly. That's not astrology. That's the science of astronomy. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that that moon was made 66 trillion years ago by an original man. That that moon is 240,000 miles away from the planet Earth, 2,160 miles in diameter, 6,782 miles in circumference. Since light travels 186,000 miles per second and the moon is only a quarter million miles away, it takes one or 1.5 seconds for sunlight to be reflected off the moon to come right back down to the planet Earth. Since our sun is 93 million miles away from the planet Earth or 150 million kilometers away from the planet Earth and light travels 186,000 miles per second, it takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds or exactly 500 seconds for sunlight to reach you and me. This is the reality and the science that Allah has made manifest to us. He didn't teach us belief. He didn't teach us religious mumble jumble. He gave us a spiritual science. He gave us the reality, something that acts in accord with balance. We call it mayat. We call it peace, truth, freedom, justice, and equality. Whatever nomenclature or scientific term we may put on it, it basically remains the same. We want to be balanced in all things. This is the $8, this is the 100% pure 
African shea butter, refined made from the nut of the African shea tree. Okay, African shea butter is a rich butter that has been used for its many skin and hair benefits. It's imported from Ghana, Africa. Get one of these. With superstition, magic, luck. If you're reading the Bible literally like snakes was in trees talking to people, you're misinterpreting God's word. If you're reading your Holy Quran saying, Allah wants you to blow yourself up so you can get some virgins when you physically die, such nonsense takes you out of this realm of reality. The Bible teaches us that God is real. The Holy Quran teaches us in Surah 22, Ayah 6, Allahu ana al haq I am the God and I am nothing but reality. So the Holy Quran doesn't teach us about a mystery God. It doesn't teach us about spooks and spirits. Those things are slave teachings. It's taught the slaves to keep you in bondage. Not physical bondage, but a mental bondage. Now what we're trying to do at the Lost Temple of Islam is help our people to help themselves. Our position is we want you to step outside your comfort zone. We want you to go wherever you feel comfortable at. We want you to go wherever you can be most effective at because we're all one. This is how our universe operates. Hydrogen doesn't have to become carbon. Hydrogen bonds with hydrogen and transform into helium. And this is how the universe grows. So the honor road Elijah Muhammad is teaching us the knowledge of ourselves because the scriptures teaches us in the Bible that my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. When we don't have the knowledge of ourselves, we don't understand the potential that exists in ourselves. But our teachings are that when we get peace of mind and contentment, money, good homes, health, friendships in all walks of life, reconciliation, forgiveness, unity, we can start making progress. This is what you see the Chinese Americans doing. This is what you see the Jewish Americans doing. I could go down South Street and see Little Italy, you see? They're smart. You can't hate them. You got to respect that. They're pooling their resources, education, and qualifications for independence. Why can't we do that? Why can't we open up our own charter schools? Why can't we make our own clothes? Why can't we cobble our own boots and shoes? Why can't we make our own little bow ties? Why shouldn't we get an economic system and a political party together? A lot of people think that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is apolitical, that he was against politics. No. The messenger taught us a message to the black man, quote, he said, start your own political party. A lost temple of Islam started the FJE party, or the Freedom, Justice, and Equality party. We will work with any local, state, national, or international politician as long as they best support our position on freedom, justice, and equality because there's a lot of resources in politics that's being misused to keep our people in bondage. So what we have to do as a people is come together and start using our common sense. Come together, whether you're Christian, 5%er, Pan-African, FOI, MGT, Sunni, atheist, whatever. We may not like each other, you know what I mean? That's family. Now, I mean, every brother ain't your brother because of the skin color, as public enemy put it. Now, I mean, but we have to understand sometimes your brother get on your nerves. Sometimes your husband will get on your nerves. Sometimes your wife get on your nerves. Sometimes you don't like your mama. Sometimes you ain't going to like your daddy. Sometimes you ain't going to like your daughter or your own son. Sometimes you ain't going to like food. Now, I mean, that's nature. That's human beings. That's what makes us love each other even more. To perfect that circle. So at random, we say 360 degrees, make a circle. Okay, now if the circle is not perfected, then we perhaps have not reached the 360 degrees, but we're working on it, right? <laughs> he said the shape of our heads and our faces is not perfectly round. If you look at the moon, the moon is a sphere, mm -hmm, satellite of our earth. And we can never, when we say full moon, it's not really fully round because there's a part of the moon that we never see, which is called the dark side, the dark side of the moon. So 
everything, brothers and sisters, I want you to take me to task on it. Yes. That we can prove every single word that we represent to you from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and we are reciting as students the assignment that we were given. And each one of you, when you step in the door of the mosque or the temple or the study guide, wherever you go, you have been chosen as part mm, of the work of a scientist. And you have training courses in the Nation of Islam, women and men, to bring out that God that is hidden in you. And perhaps one of you in Delaware or in Camden, New Jersey or Philadelphia or Washington, D.C. or back on the West Coast has produced a child, a new generation from you that will be able to master the perfection of the zero. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day down the time of uh, the line of time that we will produce scientists who will be able, are you ready for this? Yes. To make a new sun, yes. S-U-N, yes. and make a whole new galaxy yes. outside of the galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy yes. of stars. You never read in any of the magazines and the newspapers when they're reporting on Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam or those black Muslims or Brother uh, Farrakhan. Uh, always, what do they print? Negativity. You know why? That's their nature. They cannot help it. They were born on the bad side we have to <laughs> they're like the dark side of the moon that wants to keep hiding its backside <laughs> never coming out with the truth he does not have it in him because his father who came up with this idea all right of producing that which was giving us trouble cannot teach the truth they mix the truth with falsehood, lies, deception, so that when you see it, you say, hmm, that sounds like it's right, but it really is from a vibratory low uh, expression. He has started a rattlesnake, and the beetle who has been biting your brothers and your sisters and you go and tell them that that's a rattlesnake and all of the harm that have ever come to them has come to them from that particular particular source well then that rattler will think that uh the warner is teaching hate so go back and tell the other snakes that this man is teaching hate this man is teaching hate but it's not hate it's just that uh when you study people who have been harmed and discover the source of their injury the source of all of the defects, and when you begin to point out that source, it's not that you hate the source, but your love for your people is so intense, so, in, so great, that uh, you must let them know what is wrong with them, what is the cause of their ills. And uh, this is one of the basic factors I believe involved when people think, or when the propaganda is put out, that Mr. Muhammad teaches hate. He teaches black people to love each other. And our love for each other is so strong. We don't have any room that's in our house. Yeah, the, thing, the thing is, it's like, nah, see, we, I like, see, I like, I like, um, see, you got, you got, it's like, it's like the black woman. You got these sisters, they want to get the fake eyelashes, yes. butt implants, and they want to look like a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. It's like, where is your gray hair? <laughs> where's, yeah. where's, 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 why you don't have crunchies on your butt? <laughs> where's your wrinkles? Like you're not something in my nature is like this is not natural. Yeah, you right. per, you too perfect. perfect right. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Why are you so perfect? Now I mean, so so it's like natural beauty is natural beauty. Now I mean, so when you when you go, the message said when um um he got up there to teach, he was like. The savior knew he was nervous, right. so he's like, 
let me step out the room. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's he loosened, in, right? he lo loosened up. Like, okay, yeah. the pressure, I'm trying to be too perfect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the thing is, like, that's just a phase. You know what I mean? And, it, and, it's, and it's like, it's like um, once you once you just get, keep doing it, because my thing is like, nah, you don't. <laughs> that whatever a man does best and loves best to do yeah. is the thing Perhaps that that man or woman is born to do. When a person is born to do something, listen up. They accomplish it with work, but yet relative ease. It doesn't burden them or stress them to be what they're born to be. The real pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of. training and general civilization class. This was the name given to the training of women and girls in North America. How to keep house, how to rear their children, how to take care of their husbands, sew, cook, and in general, how to act at home and abroad. These training units were named by our prophet and leader of Islam, W.D. Fadat. We are taught how to sew. We are taught the dressing room of our ancestors, so now we dress in a way where men could not know the beauty of our form, but they will come to know the beauty of our mind, of our expression, of our face. We make our clothes and do not allow Satan to dress us and degrade us. We are taught how to cook. We are taught how to rear our children. We are taught how to take good care of that black man. All right, MGT. So we thank Allah for the Amber Elijah Muhammad and the Amber Minister Louis Farrakhan because they said that the black woman must be highly educated, cultivated, refined, respected, and protected. Why must you know how to keep house? Wherever you live, you can't let that environment degenerate to filth because you live there. So your nature and your duty by nature is to keep that house, keep things in order, and above all, keep things clean. How to rear your children. You're trying to rear children that will escape the world and build a new one. 
That takes a special kind of rearing system. You have the ability to do it. You just need the know-how. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been trained by the great Mahdi, Master Farad Muhammad, to give you that kind of knowledge. They say behind every great man is a woman alive. Beside every man and sometime in front of every great man, there's a woman. grace of God and the white man 
we were with a lot of people. So we should be on our knees forever praying and thanking God that we were brought, even in slavery, to this land to escape the horrors of Africa. And this was brought in and drilled into us generation after generation. Africa. The second largest continent is an area of almost 12 million square miles in size. Yeah, we're going to um, shoot over your mom, Chris, make sure she all right, see if they need anything, her uh, can't be. I think the only thing they need is probably some um, bananas and some water. We got it. We, we got enough water. Why do you want me to stop? How can we eat to live in a world of fast food? Oh, yes, ma'am. In this modern day and time, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that at the time he was teaching that there's very little pure food on the market. Mm -hmm. He said soon there won't be any. Mm -hmm. I believe we're living in that day and time where there is no pure food left. Everything is uh, genetically engineered, um, grown in laboratories. Mm -hmm. You know, they got seedless oranges, seedless grapes, mm -hmm. seedless watermelons, you know, yeah. and all of this stuff is definitely genetically engineered. You know, if, if it don't have no seeds, how are you gonna reproduce it? You know, that's, 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 that's just a, uh, uh, just common mm -hmm. sense within itself. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 
common sense to tell you that this is not good for you. Mm -hmm. You know that you know it's, if it's not natural, especially for the natural man, which is ourselves, you know, natural women, you know, we need natural things, you know, to get proper vitamins and nutrients and things out of. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that fasting. Mm -hmm. You know, with the right foods and at the right time is the greatest cure to any disease that we may acquire in this day and time. So we got a lot of fast food joints everywhere. You know, uh, McDonald's, yeah. Burger King, Taco True. Bell, uh, the restaurants. Popeyes. Yeah, Popeyes, <laughs> KFC. Mm. You know, they, everybody goes out to eat uh, sub shops, everything. Pizza. Ah, pizza. Yeah, definitely, you know, pizza. <laughs> We love our pizza, you know, the, the cereal, I mean, the, the, the soda, yeah. you know, it's, it's all kinds of things that's bad for our health, you know, just, 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 we're killing ourselves with our lifestyle, yeah. you know, yeah. the most time Elijah Muhammad, he got us, you know, to break down to eating one meal a day, you know, <clears throat> that one meal a day, it gives our systems time to get rest, yeah. you know, he teaches us. You know, with that one meal a day, we need to fast, you know, at least once a month, you know, to clean ourselves out. And a fast for us is not not eating for 24 hours. It's 48 hours or more. Okay. So when we say we fasting during the month of December or, you know, the month of Ramadan, as a lot of brothers and sisters are doing nowadays with the Orthodox Islam and Orthodox Muslims, that is not a fast. And most of Elijah Muhammad taught us that we call it a fast, but it's not a fast, right. you know. Call it a fast because this is the mindset of a lot of people who use who's used to eating two, three, four, five, six times a day, you know. So if they just eat one time a day, that's like a, you know, like a fast. I remember when I first came into the nation of Islam, brother said, "You gonna eat one time a day?" I'm like, "What?" And matter of fact, this brother, I'm like, "What?" I read in how to eat the live. I got to give up fried chicken steak. I'm like, I can't do all that. Yeah, I love my fried chicken, my steak. I give up, you know, all the rest of that stuff, but I need my fried chicken and steak. You know, eventually I broke broke down and you know got rid of all that stuff and you know started going on fasts and started um trying to eat better food and things of that nature, even in the belly of the beast. Yeah. You know, you try to eat salads and, you know, just try to get away from a lot of the greasy stuff and all that. And you start feeling better, mm -hmm. you know, exercising yeah. and things of that Looking nature. Better. But in this day and time, you know, following how to eat to live to the best of your ability is what will help you in this modern day of, you know, fast food and things of that nature. I eat fast food here and there, you know, but I don't make it a habit of eating mm -hmm. that. You know, I try to take the best parts of it. You know, my wife, you go out and get some, you know, give me some sides, you know, give me yeah. a salad, mm -hmm. you know, give me uh, some juice, you mm -hmm. know, instead of the soda and yeah, things yeah. of that nature. So you try to get the best parts out of anything, you know, sure. with the day mm -hmm. and time that we living in, it's hard to it find is. something, yes, you know, is. worthwhile, mm -hmm. you know, to put into our body. We poison mm -hmm. ourselves with everything that we put in our body. Mm -hmm. I don't care how... You, you poison yourself with a bean pot, mm, you yeah. know, with navy beans yeah. and things of that nature there. And these are supposed to, you know, healthy things for mm. you, but just the way that they grow them in this day and time with all the pesticides mm, and extra true. insecticides and things of that nature there. You know, we poison ourselves every time we drink water or anything. Mm -hmm. So this right. is why we need to fast and, you know, pray within and, you know, exercise and things of that nature to, you know, build up sweat and help you know, get some of this poison out, out of our bodies and things of that nature there. And of course, it's gonna help you live longer, you're mm -hmm. gonna feel better. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know, it's, it's, you know, we could go on and on and on and on, you know, the ministers of the Nation of Islam, we can talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we can teach. So I'm gonna pass it on to my brother, you know, we could, we could keep going. But with that, you know, as alaykum. As alaykum. thank you, bro. Um, Alif, what is a good, way to lose weight uh that's an excellent question i need to lose some weight i'm gonna pick it up <laughs> nah, nah, the, 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 um, um how long how long when did i meet you how long ago was nah, that man. i was in the 80s nah. 1992 up in rock you know, 92. the first time when i saw yeah. 92 we had we had a law amongst us one of the things one thing we used to do was um 
you had to be a vegetarian. We so we practiced being a vegan for years. You know I mean, you know, we were serious about eating and live. You know what I mean? Like so I experimented with poisons <laughs> and and good food. You know what I mean, better food if you will. You know what I mean, you know. So one thing I honestly can say is that How to Eat to Live, book one, 1967, and that How to Eat to Live, book two, 1972, that's it. You don't need nothing but to stick with that mathematical formula, you know what I mean? You know, we, we can, um, you have to be conscious, like he brought up, in this day and time, things change. Now you got all this genetically engineered stuff. The seeds is different. Even even if the seed is in it, it's a patent on the seed. And I mean, you know, it's like they you, you take a tomato. If you're a vegan, you bite a tomato. You're eating meat. They put mm. fish in tomatoes. Oh, wow. Yeah, they cross. Oh, it's crazy mm. this day and time. Now, I mean, they they you know it's, it's it's just ridiculous what they're doing with the food experiment with it. So you gotta you gotta use gradualism. You gotta do the best you can under the circumstances. And even when you have knowledge itself, like I know how to eat to live, but you be so busy. <laughs> I mean, you doing you know in this hectic world, paying bills, ripping and running. You see the convenience of this little fast food place, this little diner, or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know you got so you gotta you gotta pick your poisons. You know what I mean? Like. What I do, I don't like, um, say, eating from a place like they cook pork on the grill yeah. and then they going to put your mm -hmm. egg on there or your, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, your vegan mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. So you got you to gotta know, I'd be like, okay, well, um, I, I wouldn't eat McDonald's pancakes. So if I want some breakfast, like, okay, they got some oatmeal in there. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't like white bread. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, certain stuff gets me bloated, you know what I mean? So, you know, you, you might find a place that has some whole grain, you know what I mean? What have you, you know what I mean? But I did find two things that is real effective in losing weight. One is cutting back on carbs. When I, when I'm, when I say carbs, I'm saying I don't care what you eat. Even if you was eating fast food, mm -hmm. if you got a cheeseburger, take the top of the bread off and throw it to the birds and you eat that just taking that piece of bread off mm -hmm. imagine going through the year where you don't eat all that bread you know what i mean that's helping you lose weight but carbs really does a lot and it's because the wheat the barley the oats this white flour even so-called enriched flour is totally different and our body can't um process it properly you know what i mean so one of the things that I found that's a real easy and simple thing, and I covered it years ago in a book I wrote called The, um, the Angel's Diet. And um, basically, it's a chapter in there, and it basically, the short version is, there's a so-called 24 hours in a day. We know our lesson is 23 hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds in a solar day. But say the 24-hour period. It's eight hours in the morning, eight hours in the afternoon, then eight hours at night, in the evening, then at night. The first eight-hour period, is when you get up mm -hmm. that's the time of elimination mm -hmm. you urinate you defecate you brush your teeth you take a bath you take a shower you clean your ears you you basically get the toxins out and off of the body okay. you know what i mean that's the first eight hour period the next eight hour period is the time of ingestion you eat your one meal preferably a law teaches us to eat between 4 and 6 p.m 4 p.m. in the summer, because mm -hmm. you notice it gets darker, I mean, in the summer than it doesn't. 4 p.m. In the, in the summer, it gets darker later in the summer. That's why we Ramadan in December, I mean. But 4 p.m. in the summer, um, 5 p.m. in the fall, and 6 p.m. in the winter season. So if you want a elementary, simple format, I would tell the person this. Whatever you're eating, do not eat after eight o'clock at night. If you're eating fast food, healthy food, if you're vegan, if you eat fish, if you eat nothing but a little white chicken or whatever, don't eat anything after eight o'clock at night. Now what happens? If you stop eating at eight o'clock at night, 
Say you was eating your junk pizza, you was eating whatever, but now the eight o'clock came around, you stop eating. Look at that, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, you sleeping. Mm -hmm. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. You went 13 hours or half a day where you wasn't eating anything, mm -hmm. you wasn't drinking anything, okay? Now, that right there, you're going to see the pounds. Wow. One month, you'll see that. Just you'll be like, oh, all I did was I don't eat after eight o'clock. That's a little simple, elementary way of, of doing that. You'll see your blood sugar regulate, your cholesterol. I mean, you know, those that pre, um, pre with pre diabetes, what have you. You'll see that your body. Now, say say um, certain days your metabolism may be real strong so some days gonna be better than worse than other days so say you'd be like I don't eat after eight o'clock and you doing that for six days then on the seventh day you'd be like man I'm hungry than a mug that's good mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean <laughs> you usually don't be hungry now you your body like yo we need a little something go get some fruit <laughs> I mean go go get you if you need some pro get go get a, a lean piece of, of fish or chicken if you're a vegan go get you a small salad eat something that's healthier no, I mean, you know, don't like you said, like we don't we don't buy sodas and none of that. Now I mean, yeah. we'll we'll take get some salsa, mm -hmm. some real juice. Now I mean, we'll we'll we you know we got the juicer thing. We'll make our own smoothies or whatever the case may be. Now I mean, but the thing is, it's like you just want to balance it out where it's like don't kick yourself when you slip up. We all slip up. Our holy messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, said, I, I mess up when it comes to how to live. You know what I mean? So, so no one's perfect. Don't, don't, don't even believe they are. You know what I mean? You know, but the good thing is if you take and just simply stop eating at 8 o'clock at night, you give your body at least a full 12-hour period to detox from all the poisons that you um, suffer from. And... I don't care if you're young or old, you'll see the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. Not just physically losing pounds, but you're giving your bone marrow the atomic cleansing that it needs. You're giving your heart, your brain, your kidneys, your, your filters, you're giving your liver, you're giving your kidneys the opportunity to flush themselves out. Mm -hmm. I mean, and drink some water. I mean, a lot of us are not hydrated enough. Now, I mean, just drink, drink some spring waters to, to clean as you want pH level like pH seven, eight, nine. Now we got different ones, but try to get you some water, some spring water instead of this tap water and all this other stuff. And just simply just stop eating at eight o'clock. And I truly believe that you'll see the benefits of it mentally and physically. You lose the mental weight as well as that physical weight. Peace, family. Mm -hmm. Salam along. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brothers. That man is the master, the Mahdi, the Messiah, the Supreme Allah. That's the one that blessed us with the knowledge of self. All praises due to Allah who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. To whom all praises are due forever. Listen to Elijah Muhammad asked himself a rhetorical question. He asked, how came that first God, Elijah? And he said, imagine. So he had to take us from the physical to the mental plane. Now, I mean, he explained to us, imagine the entire visibility of our universe being removed. No sun, no moon, no stars, no planets, no asteroids, no people, no atoms no thing when something is doing no thing we define it or consider it as no thing this is how the black man began he began with no thing but from that darkness from the invisible he manifested the visible what does this mean this means that when you try to do something whether you're trying to build yourself your company your community your nation, the universe, or what have you, you have to begin with the self. You have a lower self and a higher self. You have the devil on a physical plane. You have the God on the mental plane or the will, the seventh dimension. So on that dimension, the will, there 
is not going to be no helpers. You're not going to have no brothers and sisters helping you. There's going to be no budget, no bank account. You're not going to have no fame. You're not going to have no glitter. You're not going to have a temple or mosque. You're not going to have Muhammad speaks. Imagine just you showing and proving that the black man is God. A lot of brothers and sisters just ain't ready for that. They have what's called the Messiah's complex. They want Moses to come do it. They want Jesus to come back and do it. They want Prophet Muhammad to come. They want the Mahdi to come do it for them. They want the mother plane to come save them. They want the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to save them. They want Father of Law, Minister Farrakhan, Malcolm X, Salas Muhammad, the Black Panther Party going to protect them, help them, and do for them that which they ultimately must do for themselves. This is the struggle, family. You know what I mean? To be willing to go into that darkness, to willing to go to the edge, to, willing, to be willing to go confront Satan face to face. How do you know you're in heaven? Because you've been to hell. <laughs> How do you know you're God? Because you've been a devil. When you have knowledge of self, it don't stop there. Then you have to get the wisdom of yourself. Then you have to get the understanding of yourself. And when you have the understanding of yourself, you'll be able to do for yourself. You won't be waiting upon a mystery God. You won't have a Messiah come, oh, my minister going to do it. I'm waiting on my captain. I'm waiting on my secretary. I'm waiting on the brothers in the street to come in jail and save me and get me out of jail. Spooky. Setting up partners with Allah. Allah don't answer them kind of prayers. You have to show and prove that the black man is God. Are you ready? I'm ready, family. I've been ready. The struggle continues. Relationships between black women and white men. With me to discuss this very volatile issue are two leading psychiatrists, Dr. Francis Welsing, a member of the uh, psychiatric department of the Medical College at Howard University, and Dr. Alvin Poussant, a psychiatrist, a member of the Medical College at Harvard University, and author of the well-known book, Why Blacks Kill Blacks. To begin with you, Sister Welsing, why do you believe, basically, black men are becoming so significantly attracted to white women, or is it vice versa? I'd like to turn it around. Um, I think, first of all, that um, white women are seeking black men first. Black men are, some are, attracted to white women. And I don't think that we can understand this phenomena unless we understand really what is the larger dynamic that is occurring uh, not only in this society but in the world at large and the way that I look at that phenomena is that uh, number one we are living within the context of um, a system of white supremacy which is my definition of racism racism is a worldwide system of white supremacy domination and control and all of the behavior that we see all over the world whether it's the behavior of the black woman, the white woman, the black man, or the white man, is occurring within the dynamics of this system. And um, we can understand what is happening as far as the white woman, black man relationship and why that is on the increase. I think if we understand the need for the system to remain intact. But Francis, you, okay. you don't think that um, the black man has a special attraction toward the white woman? Oh, America. yes, he does. Yes, he does. He Why is, is you... Well, he has been programmed historically to feel that, first of all, this is the woman who is the woman in the world. And this is the thing that has been denied him, you know, in terms of, let's say, uh, male-female relations or sexual partners. The black man, at least in this area of the world, has been told historically, you cannot look at, you cannot touch this woman. And so at that level of social dynamic programming yes the white the black man has always felt well this is the one thing that i have been denied in this society and so many black men i think uh for you know at one level they are moving towards white women as white women move white women are the major aggressors in this situation but the black man is playing his role because he says well this is the thing that i've been denied 
this is the thing that is going to be the great equalizer. I think so that the need has sort of been exaggerated because if we look at those statistics you just mentioned, actually in the, in the past decade, even with the increase, there's only about 43,000 black man, white woman marriages. That's a very, very tiny percentage. That means about 2% of black men are married to white women. Mm -hmm. Now, if we had accepted the propaganda, that is the white propaganda, that all black men desire a white woman and they want to marry your daughter, you would expect the incidence of the, the marriages to really be increasing at a much greater yeah, rate. I was going to ask, uh, does it mean that, uh, uh, that the fact that if we, if we accept the fact that black men do feel that white women are preferable to black women, are we saying that their behavior in the context of standard behavior is normal or abnormal? Well, I don't, I don't like to use those terms. I would prefer to understand the phenomenon. For example, if we start labeling behavior, um, like, for example, homosexuals don't like to be called pathological, for one thing. Um, and I think that it is more useful if we say, well, let us try to understand the phenomenon of homosexuality as opposed to saying, well, now that's sick, and then people get turned off and they don't spend time trying to understand the dynamic. In the same way, I don't want to look at the phenomena of, you know, cross-color um, sexual mating or marriage or whatever. And in terms of pathology, I would rather say, well, let's try to understand what actually is going on. Would you and call the white woman the aggressor? I say that she is aggressive because we live in the context of a white supremacy society in which white people are the dominant group. They are the people who control the power. We are the oppressed people. We are the people who are victims of that system. Just like, I mean, in terms of history, it was just a short two months ago in terms of the whole historical span that black men were being lynched for looking at a picture of a white woman. Do you see? And now we are told, well, now everything is opened up. Well, I want to understand, well, why is it that everything is opened up? I think everything has opened up since black men started talking about black power. You see, when black men start talking about black power, then that says, well, all right, maybe there will be a challenge to the system of white supremacy domination, not only in this area of the world, but all over the world. So the white supremacy system says, all right, well, now what do we do to you know, get these people back in control, and what do we do to get them back in check? That is the black man. Well, we'll lay our ace trump card on them, which is a white woman. In, in other words, you see, I, which brings the I black man then back within mm -hmm. the context that the white supremacy system is going to work for you. See, we denied you this, now you have it. But on close examination, in spite of all of the black-white marriages, the black-white sex that has occurred throughout history, in the last 500 years, there has been no serious tampering with the maintenance of white supremacy, Not certainly not through the bedroom activity. Last trick. Do you see what I'm saying? But in other words, it throws people off balance. So in the, other white, words, the white woman is still, I think, in a position of psychological dominance. And right. That, and so far as she is, that's a form of white supremacy, and that the black men are frequently responding to her dominant position, the fact that she is considered a superior status object in society. But getting back to this point... What? To say salam Allah. Salam Allah. Allah salam. Put your eyeballs in the socket and rearrange our face and beat us and stomp us before the Listen world. Up. We're the same people that get up because God just made us with tender and sensitive hearts as his chosen people yeah. and say, well, can't we just get along? <laughs> the United States House of Representatives in an unprecedented action. I don't know whether there's a precedent for the U.S. House to take its time to debate and vote on the condemnation of a private citizen, but it has done that. 435 members of the House of Representatives debating the, uh, debating the condemnation of uh, Mr. Muhammad. Here, is two, uh, here are two members of the House on opposing sides. Uh, calling for the uh, censoring of Mr. Muhammad is Congressman Lantos, followed by Congressman Abercrombie, who, uh, Abercrombie, who makes a, a, a statement on behalf of free speech. Watch this, House of Representatives. On November 29, 1993, at Keene College in New Jersey, Mr. Khalid Muhammad, a senior representative of the Nation of Islam, delivered an outrageous and violent attack on the principles of racial, religious, and ethnic intolerance. 
His attempt to incite violence by preaching bigotry and hatred must be swiftly and forcefully condemned by this body. Governmental sanction against any speech, objectionable as it may be, is always suspect. Is always suspect. The Constitution has proven to be our strongest safeguard against the Mohammeds of the world. Let us respect and revere the Constitution of the United States and vote down this resolution. Uh, Congressman Abercrombie's uh, position did not carry. The final vote uh, by the House of Representatives on the matter of condemning Mr. Muhammad was 361 yay, 34 nay. You have, sir, been condemned by the United States House of Representatives. I assume you are flattered by that action. <laughs> I believe that my ancestors, I believe that the blood that cries out from the grave of my ancestors who went to an untimely death at the hands of the white wicked slave traders, I believe that they cry out, their spirit is around me and their spirit emanates from me. And I believe that as a righteous man of God, but as a freedom fighter and a revolutionary, it is one of the greatest honors that could be paid. It'll be driven out with the force of God. And nothing on this earth can withstand the force of God. We say, as we have been taught, and this is the Muslim prayer, it was not invented today. We find it in the Quran. Surely I have turned myself to you, O Allah, who originated the heavens and the earth. I am not of those who associate God with God. Surely my prayers and my sacrifices my life and my death is all for Allah, the Lord, the keeper, the sustainer of all worlds. We say that and we mean it. Don't think that emotionalism is a force to shake this house. This is not a sitting bull ceremony. The interpretation of the chiefs among the Indians. No, the common FOI and MD, each MDT, the common, the, the ordinary brothers and sisters in our midst who don't have what we call official rank. Even they have the knowledge and the understanding of the real power in this house. This is not a church. Gymnasium. This is not a musical formed thing. We know the life of babies. We know the nature of babies. We know the strength of babies. We know that when, test, when the test is put upon the baby, the baby reacts to the test emotionally because God has not formed that baby in knowledge. It is still a child of emotion. God has not let it live long enough to become a child of knowledge. But Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, I have supreme wisdom from Almighty God. And all of us are men and women of knowledge. And when the strong gush of wind coming from the forces of emotion come, come against this house, 
and blow, the windows stay intact, the shade doesn't even waver. The curtains at the window, though the window be up, won't even be moved, moved by the winds of emotion. Simply because this house is built on strength, divine strength. This is a house formed by knowledge. And men of knowledge just don't fall down in the floor and weep and moan and cry like babies when the winds of emotions come. In the field of the sciences of life, and this includes dinosaurs. There's a lot of misinformation, misinterpretation, mistranslation, mistransliteration about dinosaurs. For the sake of clarity in time and space, let me point out that the messenger does not believe in the Caucasian's theory of dinosaurs and by that we mean this they basically teach that there's this jurassic period and hollywood show these movies of the dinosaurs and they basically running around doing that thing then as children we seen like the flintstones and you had caucasians living with dino the dinosaur or people think that they were the cavemen living with the dinosaurs. Then you have people that take the devil's theories and transform the theory into actual facts. But in 1972, in his Theology of Time series, the messenger explained to us that a theory may or may not be true. He teaches us that we have to stop listening to guesses. You know, he teaches us that in Islam, everything is mathematics. It's based on cause and effect, actions and reactions. And he explained to us in the Theology of Time, when he asked him about animals and the origin of animals, he explained that the law taught him, ever since we had the planet, we had animals right here on it. Now, if we, in 2017, were to look back in hindsight and try to analyze what animals do we have on the face of the planet Earth? There are too many species on the face of the planet Earth for us to count. There are a whole lot of animals on this planet. And the nature of this planet, the nature of life itself is such that animals come and animals go. By that we mean that we have animals that are on Earth today that will not be on Earth tomorrow. We have species on Earth that scientists try their best to preserve because they know that those particular creatures for different reasons, man-made or through natural disasters or through nature, are becoming extinct. So there are animals that we can find fossils of that are no longer here. But that's a big jump from going inside a museum and saying 64 million years ago, this particular creature roamed on the earth before man. That everybody else is doing without all of the headache. Let's look at page 30 dealing with small business administration loans real briefly. Uh, the main thing I want to point out when it comes to a small business loan, uh, uh, access a guarantee fee. This fee is based on the loan's maturity and the dollar amount guaranteed, not the total dollar amount of the loan. The guarantee fee is initially paid by the lender and then passed on to the borrower at closing. The funds the business needs to reimburse the lender can be included in the overall loan proceeds. All right, the short version of this is the Small Business Administration has all kinds of things, but the main thing is, is the 7A loan, okay? This uh, basic 7A loan is the most commonly provided type of SBA business loan based on historical dollars approved, okay? They are the most flexible types of SBA loans because they can help finance such a large variety of business purposes for the largest number of business types engaged in the widest spectrum of activity. In the federal government's 2013 fiscal year, that's October 1st, 2012 to September 30th, 2013, about 80% of the dollars and 38% of the number of all 
7A loan for basic 7A loans. The reciprocal percentages were divided between the nine other 7A programs. All right, the short version is, when it comes to the 7A loan, it's basically, the Small Business Administration is basically saying, okay, if you're giving, let's, let's simplify with $100. Say you're coming in and you're trying to get $100. The Small Business Administration will back you up and guarantee you say, all right, listen, if the bank give you $100, we're going to guarantee that loan by $80. So actually the bank risk is only $20. You see what I'm saying? So banks like doing that. Now, I mean, it's just like a VA loan. Now, I mean, if you get a housing loan, you was in the military and stuff, you got a VA home loan, for example, and they say, okay, look, we're going we're gonna to back this up with, say, $38,000. Now, the, the mortgage company be like, okay, we'll give you uh, three, four $400,000, I mean, for your, your credit, because we know that the government is going to back up this particular loan. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with the SBA. Computer, be prompt. You know I mean, if you would like to uh, pay a bill, press three. You know I mean, if you would like to request a credit card increase, press five. I want, I want more money. Press five. If you would like, um, one moment, what's your card number? Give us card number and all that. And they're going to check the map. What do you do with this card? And they're going to be like, oh, dang, he's the passenger. We're the bike. What, 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 what? Oh, this dude, he, he took in. <laughs> $3,000 the first month in full. The second month, he moved $2,816.04 and paid us back in full. Then in the third month, he took $1,500 off his card. And when we sent him the bill for the $1,500 and told him he only got to give us $86, he ain't sent us the $18. He sent us $1,501, so we owe him a dollar automatically approved for a credit card increase. That $10,000 card 90 days later, they'd be like, all right, we're going to put $15,000 on that card now because you're a good customer. Now you got $15,000 on there. You'd be like, what you do? I did the same thing. The person blinked their eyes three months, three months, three months, three months. Be like, man, one year, I got over $100,000 in, in credit cards. You know what I mean? You'd be like, hey, you'd be like, all I did was use my $500 properly. I did 10 trade lines. That's all I did. I took 10 trade lines and turned that into a $10,000 card. And when I got that $10,000 card, I took got some more trade lines and got another credit card because my score was up. So when my score went up, I was able to get another credit card. So I had $10,000 on my spark card. Then I got $10,000 saved on my ink card. So now I got $20,000 to do. So I took a thousand dollars off this card and got trade lines with it. You know what I mean? So I got 20 trade lines over here flowing. So now my business credit score is excellent. And when the bill came saying, yo, you owe a thousand dollars on this card, I took a thousand dollars from this card and paid this card off in full. Now I got a whole month before I got to pay this bill off. And then when this bill came out, I took a thousand dollars off this card and paid this bill off in full. You see what I'm saying? Then when that money came away, they'd be like, well, what's happening? Them trade lines, the time, 30 days, 90 days went by. So what happened? My credit score kept going up. It was an 80, now it's a 96. What do that mean? I filled out the American Express business card, and on that one card, they mailed it to me, and they put $50,000 on my American Express card. What did you do with the $50,000? The first thing I did is took that $50,000 and I spun at least $500 to $5,000 to get me some more trade lines. You know what I'm saying? And this is how it operates. This is, this is the machinery. You know what I mean? But you got to have a, a, a still mind. The, the, you got to have, that's why I love young boys that hustle. They got to turn, a, make a dollar out of 15 cents. I mean, you'd be like, in the underground, they take a quarter, and they getting bricks. Mm -hmm. It's a science to that. You know, say, for example, you got another young boy, and he only took, like, hey, man, I'm hustling. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You'd be like, yo, what you doing? I'm, I'm out here selling that loud. Be like, but you smoking the loud. <laughs> the thing is, you don't get high on your own supply. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with credit cards. People get high on their own supply. <laughs> they be like, I got $10,000 on the car. Okay, hustling, you know what I mean? You see them 90 days later, you be like, okay, how much you got now? Uh, 
$360. The money. Oh, man, you know it's summertime. Now, I mean, you know, they had the concert down AC. I took my girl, we shot down there. Went to the hotel. You know what I mean, we had dinner. You know, going down there, you got to look fresh. You know what I mean? So I got the new Jordans. Now, I mean, I got the new glasses. And, you know what I mean? I had to get the little, you know, that's they know. They don't realize now they in debt for nine thousand dollars. So instead of growing a business, they crushed the business, bankrupt. Their personal credit, credit bankrupt. <laughs> they in debt. Billy called <laughs> the bill collector. Don't answer the phone. They, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it's messed up. It's not messed up because it don't work, or it's not messed up because they can't do it. It's messed up because they didn't 